Your arm's going to be fucking massive carrying them around, mate. <laughs> <laughs> fucking champ, they, champ. They look like at that. three kilos each. Champ, champ. Do you know I mean they, they look good? It sounds good, feels good. Do you know I mean? <laughs> it's good, mate. But so uh, when when I put it on, I had to watch it on my phone. Um, on on the fight pass, obviously. The missus was like, "You look really nervous." I was like, "Oh yeah." I was like, "Mason's about to fight for the fucking." Uh, the welterweight title and she was like you've never met him i went yeah but he's still my mate <laughs> i was like <laughs> mate i was gutted um the whole thing like we was meant to meet food um obviously after the fight and then darren said he broke his foot and broke he his couldn't foot. come so uh, i still haven't always injured uh, that lad mate he's always injured always injured do you know what he did uh we'll have to sort something out soon do you know what he did did he tell you what he did Nah, I would do. Nice. Stubbed his toe, yeah, didn't he? I'm sure he said he fell. Yeah, that's what he said. He broke his foot. Back off. He stubbed his toe, mate. <laughs> right, let me check his toe now. That's enough. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's, that's enough showing off, mate. That's enough. That's enough. This is going to oh. sound like I'm popping champagne, but I'm not. <laughs> what are you popping? Just, just blonde beer, mate. Blonde beer. Blonde beer. Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, Dar Darren was saying that you were going to go around. He was going to cook you steak or something, wasn't he? Yeah, me and the missus, I think. Two of us. He said uh, he bought the steak small and then um, his foot was broke. Does that does that stop you cooking steak? Does it? Uh, didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realise he cooked like, steak like, with his feet. <laughs> mate, my parents were like, oh, we'll go out for food Wednesday. I was out oh, Thursday. I can't reach day. He's meant to be going down. Um, Wednesday it was. And I was like, look, I can't go Wednesday. I literally said I'll meet two of the um, boys I do podcasts with a lot for food. And then obviously, um, uh, I, obviously when it all come about and you can get off work and then um, uh, I was like, oh, look, I'm just going to go meet the one now. I said, I'll do it. Like, so um, I was like, I'll still go down. And then he cancelled and we ended up going to Mad's house now for uh, food with folks. So it, it worked oh, out well. Not, but That's I mean, all good though, isn't it? It's you're, good. you're a man it's in demand. Fun, man in demand. Mate, I genuinely think you and him are catfishing me, honestly. <laughs> you have my eyes out, mate. Probably joking. Nah, <laughs> oh, mate. I, I was like fucking buzzing. I was, I was jumping around the fucking living room a lot. Fucking daughters were looking at me, going, "Daddy, what the hell are you doing?" I went, "You have no idea." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So good, uh, funny story. I think people are like to hear this. So um, one of my um, uh, sort of family friends, um, through my girlfriend, uh, Owen, he. Uh, we've all like we've been close since I've been with Mad. Um, he, he works with Mad's mom, and um, he's a really nice chap. Well, then um, he was he had it on watching TV, and um, they were all really tense. And he said, like, as the fight I was getting, he's getting closer and closer to TV, and he was leaning forwards, and he was all like ants his pants. And then when the fight went on, he started shouting. So they reckon like too much, like he was screaming at the TV, like fucking smash him and all stuff like this, and like probably getting into it. All well and good. The next day, uh, he said he, he walked past in the neighbor, so he went across and said hello. And she looked at him and was like shaking. And he was like, like, are you okay? And she was like, I heard you last night. Um, da -da -da -da, um basically like accused him of being a domestic uh, of domestic oh, okay. violence. And he was like, he was like, oh no, honestly, he said I was just watching my mate fight on the TV. That's why we got so excited. And she was like, I've had, I've got a history of domestic violence. I, I, I know what violators are like. Da -da -da -da. And he was just like, no, honestly, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> not. No, <laughs> fucking loonies. Absolutely oh, not. It was brilliant, oh, though, mate. It really was. Funny. Fucking really was. Thank you very much. Thank Bye. you very much. Got the job done. We, we, we know you love a scrap. And there was a couple of times where he caught you. And I was like, oh. He did. He caught me on the way in a few times. That jab. Yeah, I was like, so long, man. Like, he's 6'3. Oh, no, you could. I'd, like, I knew he was tall. And then you see. During the uh, the face to face before the fight started, I was like, "Fuck it, he is a lot taller." Jesus, he's a big boy. <laughs> Don't matter, mate. Don't matter. Dust them up now. Dust them up. But there, I thought it's hilarious when the commentators were saying, "Fucking 
Mason starting to look tired. He's he's not on his toes. I was like, no, nah, he's he's planting here. He's gonna. Mate, it was literally so like um, it wasn't too much their confidence now. It was um, so what they said was that his corner shouted saying he's tiring, Adam. He's tiring. And, oh, that's um, what I. It, like Brad Warden, yeah. Brad Warden, Brad him is like, oh, um, Adam Proctor's corner have called and Mason's tired. Um, he, yeah, he does seem to be planning his feet a little bit more. And I was, um, I remember like hearing no, obviously not hearing the comment is, but I heard him literally shout he's tired after that that bit of a mad exchange where I followed him down. Like I hit him with so many shots and like. So all I was doing was thinking, look, it's five rounds of this, take your time now. So I thought, right, hold yourself, recalibrate a bit, pick him off, and then um, literally, like, you don't want to go rushing forward so much. And as soon as I heard him say that, I was just like, oh, here we go again. So back on the front foot, it's like pinning it and pressing him again. And um, that was when, obviously, the um, the jab slip, cross slip, left hook, connected flush, and that was when I just took his chin. So um, uh, big shout out to Adam Proctor's corner for... Uh, Calling that was telling me I was tired because I probably would have waited the round out otherwise just to think like five rounds instead of <laughs> destiny him up in one. Yeah. Ah, oh, fuck it. Let's take him out now. Why not? Take him <laughs> out now when I, I. But me, I caught my left hook and like I clipped him and I thought, oh, she pressured in nice and slow, was careful of my up kicks and I caught his foot. And as I looked up the past legs of the side, I looked at him and his eyes were literally just spinning in his head. I was like, oh, this is done. Past the feet, put the hook in and just started dropping bombs like. Yeah, yeah. I, I I thought the submission was coming when you took his back. I was like, oh, it could be a little... No, nah, I just wanted to hit him. And then, <laughs> and, then, and then I was like, nah, he's just, he's just gonna fucking hit him now. Fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking unscathed. Nah, tough, man, fair play. Unscathed, no, no, no marks, mark, no injuries. Uh, a little bit of black eye by here, but that was gone in like a day or two. Like, um, oh, he's already... didn't really, obviously my nose, he caught me in the jab, uh, made my nose bleed. Uh, that was it, back nose. Well, I bounced back and I was doing flat as a pancake. <laughs> <laughs> don't matter, don't matter. Oh, it's quite funny actually. So, um, my, my eldest has got a, uh, he's got a fighter's injury at the minute. This, this is all because, yeah. this is all because daddy took it a bit too far today. So, we, we were play fighting, messing around and what I did was I picked both of them up at the same time and I was going to dump them onto the sofa but because yeah. I'm a fucking idiot, I did it a bit too hard, and the youngest headbutted the eldest right on the corner of a eye socket. Split it or cut it? Nah, it, I think it almost. There's a little little mark on there, but then there's like a little uh, like a mousy fucking mouse. Yeah, it's like Ooh. yeah, there's some ice on it. It'd be alright, man. Yeah, we did all that, mate. We did all that. I told her she looks like a fighter. I was like, you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> she cried. Uh, yeah, she did for a bit. She, yeah. The, the youngest was crying. I was like, what are you crying for? <laughs> the noise in there a lot of time, and they just, they go into shock. Yeah. I was like, you look like a fighter. It's brilliant. And then the missus was like, they're not boys. Well, obviously, they're not fucking boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've, I've had to put me fucking, um, my heater on in the shed. My floor I've is soaked. I've seen your Instagram story. Yeah, my floor's soaked, mate. What's that? Condensation or is the rain coming in? I don't know, if I'm honest. I think it might be a bit of condensation, possibly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull it all up like uh, tomorrow and have a look. Yeah. Day off tomorrow, and I kid. You know what I mean? Might need to get an extractor in there. Yeah, maybe. To be fair, I've had no dramas up until right now, so, so we've had a quite a bit of rain down here so should, should be all right should be all right i i'm pretty ah, sure be fine. i'm pretty sure i've been sat in a different position every time you've been on the show yeah <laughs> but i generally think I, I just think you're in new sheds every time this is why you <laughs> sort of cement the fact you catfishing me man <laughs> no mate i just keep getting these extra little bits like i nick a chair put it in little tables <laughs> it's awesome it's awesome so has Uncle Dana phoned you yet? no nothing yet so oh. um, my manager's in talks um, I've had a concrete offer of one FC oh, yeah. um, obviously we're, we're looking we're looking at UFC so um, it's just a wait now so um, uh, with what I think is going on um, there's a lot of pressure on UFC with all the COVID stuff so they've matched 
loads and loads of fighters. So um, it's just trying to, uh, I'll probably take a short notice fight, to be honest. So I'm in camp. Um, I haven't, my weight's perfect. I haven't really bounced back. Um, after the fight, I had two slice, uh, three slices of pizza and a chocolate cupcake. And then um, I was back on diet. So um, it's just, I, I love it, do you know what I mean? Just keep, keep try and um, Yeah, it's your life the, at the uh, end of the day, isn't it? Yeah, do you know what I mean? So why not grind, isn't it? Uh, and I love it. So um, I'm back in camp. I'm back running and stuff. So I'll keep my runs up now. Uh, run tomorrow. Run cup down through the week. Keep my cardio high. Um, keep boxing. Boxing tomorrow Wednesday. And then, uh, do you know what I mean? I could have a call-up for two weeks, Abu Dhabi, or I could have a call-up for a week. Uh, it could be anything. So just stay active, stay ready. And when that fight comes, I'll take it. That's awesome, mate. That is awesome. Pretty sure Bispin was very similar, where he was always sort of... On point, mate. This thing's a nut case. He was <laughs> yeah, his cardio is out, outrageous, <laughs> unbelievable. But yeah, that's fine, mate. Seriously, I was so. I'm still buzzing now for you. Every time I see a photo, I'm like, I'm sharing that. <laughs> mate, so when I when I won the, the first title against Joe McColgan, obviously I was short notice and stuff. Um, I was more sort of focused on trying to remember. Remember, I'm sure I spoke to you after. Do I speak to you after the first title? Yeah, yeah. Did we do a podcast after this? Yeah, we did, yeah. And I tell you, my friend was in hospital and stuff and um, mm. with the, the paralysis and stuff. So um, I was that focused on trying to remember everything to say about that and also give him a mention and to make sure he knew that like we were all sort of like rooting for him and that he was on all of our minds and so I had to tell him this time. So, um, so like I didn't really, like I didn't really care too much about the title because it was just sort of like I always knew. Like I know that sounds like, arrogant. But like I'm a fighter, do you know what I mean? You've got to have that positive mentality. And I've always um, been, I do a lot of visualization. Like we talked about that before. So I, I knew that title was going to be mine in it, in it yeah. like eventually. It was always going to be part of the, the journey. So um, when I got that title, it was just sort of like, yeah, I've done it. Look at the defense now. Remember everything I had to say. This one though, because like I never, they, after the fight, we, we made jokes about fighting for the Wildweight title. And then, um, Everything started falling into place. So I, I rang my manager. I was like, look, I won that fight. I want to fight for the Wildway title. And um, I, I want to fight uh, Adam Proctor. And they were like, uh, well, that's, that's a big, are you sure that's a big step? And I said, yeah, I'm ready. Offer it to him. And um, they were like, look, we'll see if we can match it. And, and it just ended up, like they needed a main event. Um, they wanted something to capitalize the trilogy. And that was a massive super fight. Um, they want. Uh, they needed a f an opponent for him. It was difficult getting me an opponent because they needed to find a European or a US fighter, and all the boards were locked down. And it's like all these sort of, which would have been nuisances any other time, were in my favour. And then, um, like the big question was, was like, could I do it? Um, it was like, look, like a lot of people were saying I bit off too much, and then we was doing the height, the face to faces, and people were panicking. And I was just calm. Like I knew from the, the f before I even seen him before. Um, after watching his fights, I knew I was gonna I was gonna dismantle him, and I knew that. And um, like we did so many different breakdowns, and like I was expecting him to do so much stuff that he didn't do, and like stuff that I would use to beat me. And like his whole game plan was: we'll come out southpaw, we'll catch him cold because we'll be southpaw, and he won't know how to react to it. We'll pressure him back; he'll be too big, and then when we're ready, we'll take him down. And um, I think he expected I have to ground and pound me out or to sort of fit finish me. And as soon as they come out southpaw, because um, when he's ortho. I was like, right, what we'll do, I'll come out also, I'll pull him in, I'll step out, I'll hit that front leg, slow him down a little bit, then I'll start like him up. And then um, he came out southpaw, and I was like, look, just revert to the plan against normal southpaws, which was to press the, the right shoulder, step around to my, to keep going to my left or to his right, pin around that shoulder, and I, I, I'm like, I'm just going to break his ribs. Uh, I was like, I'm going to hit him that hard in the ribs, I'm going to, I'm going to break some of his ribs. So it was like, press around, kick the body, land with the hands, land with the hands, trying to make sure. It has to be two to three punches. Uh, well, three, three to five is the target goal, but feel him out first, two to threes, and then we'll start hitting him with the combos. And then obviously, um, I didn't really get past the two shots before I, I dropped him with the, um, the corkscrew up to the middle. And yeah, the, yeah. I didn't need the right hand. The right hand hit him as he was going down. And then um, obviously when he, he recovered, he recovered well, got back to his feet. And they were like, look, it's time to start putting the left hook on the end. And then it was going to be left hook, follow up with two more left shots. And then I would have probably downed him. It was two more. I'd catch people sparring. And it was like three shots to get past the long hands. And the next two to really hurt him. And it was just like, I hit him with that left hook. Boom. And that was him. And I, like, I seen his eyes rolling and I knew he was done. So I got the job done in fashion. Uh, and it just sort of like, it was such an ecstatic feeling because 
Like, this is my dream. UFC has always yeah. been my dream. And not just to go to UFC. I, I don't care about going to UFC. Like, I told you this before. UFC is inevitable for me. It's not about that. It's about going in there and smashing people up and making an impact and putting me on the map. And, like, what a way to send off from Cage Warriors. Like, I'm never fighting with Cage Warriors again. Like, it's just a wait now. And then um, I'm ready to step in those big those big leagues and ready to take those training wheels off. And I've set my legacy for Cage Warriors and for Welsh MMA. So when I go at UFC now, I'm on such a high and I'm such a positive and I feel so fucking dangerous at the moment. And all I need to do is tie everything together and I can start taking names apart. And like, I asked for a monster and I, I challenged Dana because I knew that like in this day and age and with the COVID stuff, it's very, very hard to get signed. Like they're not signing anybody. It's not like, Obviously, Jack did such a good route to show. Um, he, he earned his way and he did everything he needed to. And at the time, like they were looking for new talent. Like now they're not looking for any new talent. They're, they're not. Like they're happy with the feeders they get through the, the contender. They've got all these people looking to fight. They're trying to match. They've got like all the regulations making things difficult. So if they are going to sign someone, they're happy to sign people who can make it to the US because they know they can turn them over quick. So I'm in such a, a bad place to take it, but I made such an impact. I know that it's just, it's impossible for him to ignore. And like that call out is impossible for him to ignore. Yeah, so exactly. um, like whoever they give me, um, I'll, I'll take away wherever it is and I'll, I'll dismantle them. And like, if that means I have to step up and fight someone in the top 20 on my debut, I'll fight someone in the top 20 for my debut. Like the same as the situation is like with Jack, the same it is with me. Like I'm not, no one outside the top 20 is going to threaten me. Even these Russian so, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll tear them apart. I'll slow the fight down. I'll make the fight for them ah, an agony. I'll make every second an agony. I'll smash the front leg. I'll smash the kneecaps. I'll cut you up and I'll hurt you and I'll keep coming forwards. And like, this is the thing. People always think I'm going to tire and I never do. Yeah, that, that, that everyone thinks that, like, this is your fucking job. This is what you train to do day in and day out. If Even if it was your weakness... You would do something about it because this is your. It's like if cardio is your fucking weakness, you'd go All right. I better do some fucking cardio, then, don't I? You know what I mean? Yeah, run in, run in. <laughs> yeah, you can't just rely on fucking a one punch bomb all the time. Yeah, I mean, like, um, like my runs, I'm running like easily running like eight k's um, to the point where most of the time I'm either singing or I'm um, talking to myself or like I'm doing visualization exercises yeah. while running um, and I do it in a, in a way so I'm running and I literally have no ache in my legs. It's just running at like a, a gradual pace. It's a decent pace, but it's like long distance runners. Do you mean it's just saving? So yeah, I don't, yeah. when I, I'm able to spar, there's no massive ache. And, and um, I'm sparring people, against like elite level strikers and yeah. I'm all cool. People have got to realize just it's not off. easy running in Wales. It's not easy running in Wales. <laughs> Cold, oh, mate, it's wet, treadmill. it's hilly. <laughs> Cold, Cold wet, it's it. rainy, icy. <laughs> do you know what I mean? There's sheep everywhere. It's fucking I got chased by a ram in, in town. <laughs> Mate, I got chased by a ram before. Jenny got chased by a ram. <laughs> you knock so it out. Mean, like, people think, oh, yeah, the guy's, this guy's scared of a sheep. Have you ever seen a ram? Yeah, they're fucking horrible, they mate. Got massive, massive horns. Like, you you literally, if I booted one in the head, I think it'd just laugh at me. Jenny yeah, would think mate. it'd laugh at me. It would. So, they, they, right, those of you that don't know what a ram is, they they fight with their head, so they headbutt each other. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, um, win. Uh, well, I wanted to, so I wanted to bring up so obviously <laughs> I, 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 sh I shared this earlier. I think I I'm not you shared it as well. But you, like you said, you made a massive statement. And not only that, you're now one of three people that have held consecutive titles within Cage Warriors. Powerful Dan Hardy. Sorry, Powerful Dan Hardy. Obviously, the notorious one. And now Mason, the Dragon Jones. That's some fucking company, mate. The fir first British fighter to fight for a Brilliant. title against George St. Pierre. And then obviously, the first double champ yeah. in the UFC. So, can only mean good things. Hey, I'm excited for it, mate. Fights, like I said. First Welsh man to ever do it as well. Do you mean they've had an Englishman and an Irishman? And then Mason the Dragon Jones. So, exactly. I mean, I'm just putting Wales on the map and really pushing us. And, um, I mean, I'm happy to get in, into UFC now. I'm, I'm ecstatic. But I'm mainly happy about getting a chance to, to, to wave the flag and to, for us all, all Britain, do you mean, to really start pushing. And um, they, there's a lot of vacancies in UFC at the moment. Like, there's a big power gap. And I'm happy to go in there and fill that. And um, 
I, I just I just love fighting. Like 18 years of my time and my life I've sacrificed for this. 18 years. And I haven't even begun. Like every day I feel better than I was the day before. Like I'm doing jiu-jitsu awesome. with unbelievably good high level jiu-jitsu guys. Like I'm before this fight I was training with Ross Nichols. He came across the train and I managed to get some roles in with him. Like Ross Nichols is the first British guy to get an invitation to the ADCCs and he's one of the best um, jiu-jitsu guys in um, in Europe. Uh, then I was like, um, I'm boxing sparring with Jamie Cox. Um, I always give Jamie a shout out. He's an unbelievably nice guy. Uh, 25 and two, he lost um, for the world championship against um, George Groves. So do you know what I mean? He's, he's, yeah, he's yeah, no bang. Yeah, pedigree bum. in itself, mate. And then um, like the wrestling and jiu-jitsu, like I'm training in Cali a lot of time with like unbelievably good, like five times all American um, Gregor Roman wrestlers and bloody high level, just high level this, high level that. And, um, like, I, I'm I also just holding my own. Yeah, I also like the fact that during the build-up, like little preview thing, they said, "Oh, Mason's got no wrestling." I was like, "Are you, are you sure?" I don't know if that's the direct quote from it, but it was oh, along those lines. Just don't. Yeah, I was like, "Are you sure?" Mate, honestly, he was fighting a team alpha like, male, which is just full of fucking wrestlers. <laughs> honestly, I'm sure people just generally they don't do any research. Like I knew. I knew all. Of, I watched all of Adam's fights. I knew his mm. styles. I knew what his go-to was, and I knew about ten ways I could beat him. Um, ten ways, and they were like, "He's going to be too big," and I'm like, mm, "Not really, no." Like, obviously, I and I went in there as a lightweight. Like, I didn't go in there as a welterweight. I made welterweight, but I made welterweight without cutting any water. That's the same weight cut I do for lightweight. Like, if I wanted to, I could have weighed in at welterweight. And then the next day, I could have weighed in at lightweight. I could have just done the normal cut we did. I could have made lightweight. It's easy as that. So people are just dull honestly they're just so dull like and obviously not general public but the people i'm fighting it just doesn't make any sense like i fought joe mcgolgan and i expected joe to have so many different ways set up to beat me and um like as soon as i started calf kicking him i started cut those angles people just get surprised and it's like i'm levels above people levels above people and that showed in my fights you know I mean? it like, also um, it also I'm showed no yeah it also showed in the build-up as well when it was going mm -hmm. the the belts that you've got, like not not obviously those fucking alley belts that you yeah, yeah. got strapped on, but the black belts, and black belts and all sorts, and yeah. all that. And I was like, fucking hell! And people are saying that he hasn't got, uh, saying that he can't wrestle. Are you sure? He's not going to just like go. Oh, I'm going to have all those and not do that. That oh, I don't need that. I I don't need to add. Do you know I mean just they they won't take me down. I just keep punching them. And like it's sure because. He took me down and fair play, like we spoke about this because one of my coaches wasn't happy about it afterwards because he was like, you got, you, you dropped him the first time and then you got a bit over cocky and he took you down when he come back up. He's like, you should have been managing the distance and we talked about controlling my hips and he was just sort of like, as, I went, as we sort of, we come out with an exchange, he panicked and shot. But as soon as I hit, hit the floor, I was carried, I was back on my feet, I was running to the cage um, and I straight away peeling at his hands and like, it's literally like trying to hold a bar of soap. Like, I'm a nightmare to keep down. I'm very, very good at getting back up. Like, I train with really high-level wrestlers, and they all struggle. Not so much um, with taking me down, but just controlling me. Like, I'm gone, and then I'm back on the attack. Yeah, and yeah, like my cardio, it, It's my... one thing taking someone down. It's then trying to keep them down. Is if you can, if exactly you can, it, Jimmy. If you can spring back up, then... Mm. You know what I mean? Like, he was a big, big guy. Like, by the time I went in there, by the time I fought, I'd gone up to 80 kilos. I didn't go over 80K. Um, I think I was actually heavier in the Joe McCorgan fight than I was in this fight. Um, and then he, I know he went up to over 88, which is what, eight kilos, which is what, nearly two stone, just under two stone. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Weight nice. difference. So, uh, stone and a half. Um, so like he, he was a big boy. He was 6'3 and 5'10. Um, and he just, do you mean like it just showed there's levels to this game? And, um, like yeah. I didn't even have to get out of first gear, didn't get out of first gear. My combos, I didn't need to put combos in. I didn't really do them. I threw um, a couple of kicks, which I need to work on again. Um, like I said, my, my kicking game is still the weakest game. And then I take people apart with that. So we're always working. We're always improving. And um, But like my next UFC fight, you're really going to see me take the training wheels off. And I say that every fight. And if you lock every different fight, I'm a better fighter. And this next yeah, one, yeah, this two, you will see a better, better, more complete version of me. Yeah, just the comparison from your first title fight to to that one, you was like, fucking. It, it's, it might not be just. It might not just be the skills have got fucking sharper because obviously you have, but the confidence that you had. But yeah. I know, I just through talking to you, I know how confident you are. But sorry, let me like, back the window. I'm sweating my tabs off. Yeah, it's all right, mate. <laughs>
Man's got the heating on flat though. Then she must be drying something. Well, I've got my fucking little heaters on, haven't I? So, toasty warm in here. I am outside in a shed. You're in a house, so. Oh, this one. Hang on, this one. Hey. No, it may, um, honestly, like, the reaction to these fights as well. Like, um, obviously, you would tell how big the reaction was because it took me a little while even to get back to you and you know I love messing you, so. Um, oh, yeah, well, like, <laughs> I, I, like, I, I, sent, I sent the... Um, the fucking little voice clip here, and I thought he's going to be bombarded with about a million messages. I was like, I, I was like, someone upstairs, me missus went, who the fuck were you talking to? And I, I just sent Mace a, a, a con congratulations message. That was all. She's like, why are you doing that? I went, he's my mate. She's like, is he? I was like, fuck off. He is. Best mates now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had over 5,000 messages. Yeah, I know, mate. In, um, in, like, literally, it's been a week uh, it was a week yesterday, and I had over 5,000 messages. And I had a lot of people be like, oh, it was like, oh, leave it. Uh, they left a few days, and they messaged. And Instagram was one of the worst. Like, um, my Twitter went mental. So, so like, even um, after the fight, um, I didn't touch my phone. Because it literally, it was just, literally, it was just... So it was like, leave it on the side. And then um, I replied to some of my family and um, some, of the, some of the boys I'm close with and stuff and just dropped their message quick. And then I was like, look, let's concentrate on family time, do you mean? Because my family all go in Mendel. Oh, yeah, cool. And then um, we got into bed, and then um, we were mad, and we had to sleep. Uh, I didn't sleep long, because um, my coach and my brother, Black Sheep, was in the other room partying until 4 o'clock in the morning. Um, <laughs> so we didn't sleep much, and then... Um, Loving it, weren't they? Uh, the next morning, we woke up, I had breakfast, and I started, like, replying to some. And um, normally, she's like... She said, oh, you're going to be all day on that phone. And um, But she literally turned around and she was like, look, my phone is going mental. My coach's phones are going mental. And she was like, like, I gained loads of followers from this. And I was like, look, I gained two over 2,000 followers in 24 hours. So yeah. I, it took me from 8,200 up to 10.2. And then um, I had over 100. All it came up was 99 plus message requests, <laughs> um, as well as all the people who had already previously messaged me, messaged on Instagram. Um, I had, I don't know how many WhatsApp messages, uh, how many Twitter messages and likes and comments that I couldn't even reply to because I started liking them. I said, look, I ain't going to get back to everyone on Twitter. I'll just like every single tweet. And I got yeah. to about 100 and they just stopped letting me push the Yeah, they, they stop you because I think it's a, uh, a bot, don't they? Yeah. So um, I stopped, they stopped me doing that. Um, I text the two people back and I just had loads of messages. So I was trying to text the people back I knew. Who are like do you mean like personally um like yeah. i knew were uh, like first the uh, sort of my close ones and then um in the end well, in instagram i was taking in shifts so um she read a message out and then either like it uh if it was like enough like obviously all well, the message requests or so we'd like copy and paste and answer in and just so yeah you're not ignoring people and you're not being rude and we was doing it in shifts to get it done just so like people didn't think i was a, a complete yeah, novel. Yeah. so we'd whip in messages back to four people and i had like like three or four companies, like, oh, p please let me send you free shit. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> go ahead. Everyone. I had um, a few companies um, inquire about sponsorship. Like some of them, obviously, um, little sort of smaller companies. And obviously, like we said, is trying to I'm not, trying to find companies who can support where I want to be. Um, yeah, so yeah. We, we're focusing on bigger companies now and asking for more. And um, I don't think blame you, mate. there's, yeah, so there's, there's two I add to social media now. Um, I'm sitting down with, and the two of them should be fine. One of my old sponsors, um, they they basically said they're interested in sort of doubling what they was paying me previously, and it's getting to the point where now I can actually, um, it can go from being amateur hour to earning, yeah, that's good, mate. Earning, earning a, a big wage that my friends are on, and um, yeah, yeah. more than enough well, to be able to afford things. At the end of the day, being a you're you're a full time fighter, so obviously you rely on on the sponsorships and, and what have you, but. Mm. A lot of people go, oh, well, they're only trying to get, like, free shit. It's like, no, he's trying to build a brand. He's yeah. now a brand. Well, it was like, people, they don't sort of concentrate enough on social media. And, like, this year especially, I've really pushed it. And um, I've gone, like I said, from the start of the year, I think I was 6,000, I think, before, mm. um, at the start of the year, or less than that. And now we're up to, nearly up to 11. Um, and, like, to a lot of people, that won't, won't mean anything. But so my insight, so after I hit 10K, I had contact off a sponsorship and um, they uh, inquired about sponsorship. And so we started looking at what I could offer back.
because yeah, obviously yeah. it is a mutual beneficial stuff. My post, um, my insight to the time. So I'm reaching a target. Aud- I've reached a target audience when I hit 10k of 97,000 people. That's how many people I was hitting a target audience of. 97,000 people were seeing my fo- my posts. So now it's over 100, and like that's just going to grow. Do you mean like especially when yeah, I take, make my UFC debut and I actually tune someone up? Um, finishing the first <laughs> round like I'm going through, then it's really gonna it's really gonna show an impact to me. And like my record, it speaks for itself. Like I said, I, I um, my last six opponents, well, fifty six and seventeen, we're now fifty nine and seventeen. Hmm. Yeah, was, yeah. Well, yeah, so, yeah, I saw your um, your uh, your tweet about it. Yeah, I was like, fucking hell, fair yeah. play. Someone tagged me in into on that, and then I look back, and it's like, um, so the first four opponents I fought were the only ones like my debut was three and three then the one after that was one and one then the one after that was um three and two and then the one after that was something else, i can't remember and then um the next one after that was like uh nine and f- uh, nine and something and something like if you if you take just the last like i said the last six opponents that record is 59 and 17 or something ridiculous and one so it's just like, there's, there's no padding on my records. Like, those first couple of boys I fought, none of them had losing records. Like, the worst two boys I fought have had the same amount of wins as they had losses. Or they were, um, yeah, the same amount of wins they had losses. And that was when I fought them. Like, whether, whether they've done better now or not. Like, um, I, I didn't fight anyone who was, who was a bum. I didn't fight anyone. Like, I seen a guy who was fighting um, not long ago in a high-level promotion. And, like, one of his last couple of fights was against the guy who was on zero zero zero, and then he went in the UFC. And I'm like, how can you expect to do well and fight like legit guys when you're fighting people with zero zero records? Yeah, exactly, exactly. But you got your man C- CM Punk like that, though, didn't you? <laughs> From the UFC, Mate, if CM Punk wants to make a comeback. I'll I'll happily tune him up. <laughs> Good money. <laughs> oh. Oh, that's brilliant, though. Imagine making yeah. a, debut, a debut by smashing up CM Punk again. Do you know what I mean? I don't know whether I'd be happy about that or I'd just be a bit disgusted with myself. Just yeah. rub, wipe my tears away with the money they pay me. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's <laughs> oh, it's so sad. <laughs> I'm sorry for hitting you. <laughs> oh, nah, but genuine, like, um, I, I want to. I want to sort of get to a place where I can, I can support myself and obviously mad. We want to look again at a house eventually. And like I've had the same car for five years. I put like 160,000 miles on this basic like a death trap. So I want to look at buying myself some luxuries. I've never been, I um, do like, I'd love to buy myself a mobile and, but before I can do anything like that, I have to make sure that I build myself a brand that I set myself up so that my income is, um, is legit. Like there's no point going out, spending your first purse and just spunk it up a wall when, yeah, yeah. Um, I need to build something on myself, you know what I mean? And like my social media, my sort of my marketing, everything needs to be on point and I need to make sure I set myself up before I go anything like that. And um, like I'm not the type of person, like my, um, after, after my title fight, like, I could have used the money, sold my car and looked to buy a new car, but it was like, what's the point in that, do you know what I mean? So the money I've, um, I've literally kept back, um, I had a couple of things I had to pay out and a couple of expenses to pay, kept a bit of it back and then... Um, that's money I can do to invest in a couple of things and I can sort of start looking at some ways to make money. And then um, I, I used a bit of money to, my car needed that keep. I mean, I had to get a um, cam belt, fan belt, water pump, <laughs> uh, brake light fix, two new, two new tires. So the garage, I gave them a list. And they were like, how are you still driving this car? I'm like, hey, hey, <laughs> fix it. And the car will be good for another 50,000 miles. So Yeah, yeah, just fix it and it'll be fine. Let hey, me worry about fine. driving. I, it's the gym runner in there, do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah. Honestly, I will recommend if anyone's looking for a good car, German engineering are the ones. Do you know I mean like um, I got Volkswagen Sirocco, and it is the best running car I've ever had. The best. There you go. Shout out to Volkswagen. Sponsor hey, Mason Jones. Sponsor, send, <laughs> send me a message. We'll, we can sort something out. <laughs> hey, um, Volkswagen on golf as well, don't they? Do you know I mean if you want to send me a nice golf car to drive around in, uh, I'll happily take some Instagram posts from. I. Uh, I don't think I've got the reach for that yet. I'm not. I'm no Joe Rogan, so. Hey, not yet. Not yet, man. We'll but I know what you, I know what you mean though with the um with the uh with the sponsorship thing. Like, what what can I do for you, and what can you do for me? So, I mentioned them to you. I know you're you're uh, making your own sort of um 
project. But when I when I spoke to um, Infusion CBD the first time, I was like, yeah. look, I really like CBD. I like how it works. I'm looking for something that would sponsor the the show. And they were like, well, let yeah. me let me listen to a couple of your episodes and see what it's like. And they did. And they were like, oh, we love it. We're not um, able to financially back you at the minute, but we can send you out some products if you want to then shout out our products and if you use it and what have you. I was like, yeah, of course. And I, I do use it. I use their muscle balm, their CBD muscle balm. Yeah, it's cool, man. Yeah. Mm. Uh, we want to get them to sponsor an episode or two, do you know what I mean? Like, um, if they can't support you prop like fully, then um, get them to sponsor um, like an yeah. episode, which you like, I, I need to Rogan really look into that Just give me a shout out. Yeah, I need to. I need to look into. Mate, just copy what Rogan does. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, it's just like what Rogan does. <laughs> the funny thing is, right? So I started doing that at the at the, at the very start. My my shout outs at the beginning now are, are very limited. Um, before I was like, yeah, I'm gonna shout out this company, that company, and I was re- and then I was like, why am I doing that? They're not giving anything for me. You you don't get a shout out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what I mean like um like the CBD company? You could just be here now. You'd be like yeah. Um, talking about CBD, here we go. And <laughs> you just start rubbing it in your arm. You're like, yeah, I've mm. been on an achy arm from Karen. <laughs> here yeah. we go. Oh, oh say that. I've got a little bottle just up here. <laughs> you can't oh, even see it. You can't even see it. You can't see it either. I can't. I, uh, you, you, you'd have to get your fucking bio out to fucking look at that, mate. Hey, zoom in it. Bring it closer. Let me see it. Bring it closer. <laughs> Bring it up closer. Bring it up close. Are oh, you making me get up now? Fucking old man. Oh, sorry, man. There it is, look. Hey, that's quite cool, actually. The casing all is cool. Yeah, fair play. That's my little, uh, the, uh, the muscle rub, though, I've got. That's in my, um, in my wash kit. Yeah. So when I, when I finish, yeah, yeah, when I, when I ride to work, I put it on my knees and my fucking ankles when I get there. Because yeah. cause I'm the oldest 33-year-old you'd ever know. <laughs> I got, mate, I got up this morning, walked to the toilet, and my missus was like, you're walking like your old man. My old man's 69 and did over 3,000 <laughs> fucking parachute jumps. My yeah, ankles I, are that I, shit. I, I, think, oh, I think I can top that, to be fair. Um, so, um, uh, my coach, my, like, we are, I'm massive into CBD. Like, I don't take as much as I should, um, which yeah, I find same. good supply at the minute now, and, um, like we spoke about something that I'm aiming to do in the future, which I don't really want to mention now, but obviously, uh, yeah. keep on a DL. That's but, why I never um, mentioned yeah, it, lot, by the way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like I am massive in, in CBD, and um, like my coach, um, he had bad knees uh, for a long time. And like we mentioned it to him, I mentioned it, one of the boys mentioned it. He was like, oh, look, I'll give it a go, but like I don't really think anything. And he's like, mate, he was like, I had so much less pain in my knees. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, he's just finding good. Good concentrations and good quality CBD is hard. It's like I know a lot of people they they sell it and it's literally just oil. Um, yeah. They don't put much yeah, in yeah. and then they just they try and rip people off. So it's trying to find good good quality ones. But when you do, it makes such a difference. Like with sleep with me. So like I went through stages where because I was training so hard, um, I stopped sleeping. So which sounds backwards, but when you go over, no, time, no, no, no. I, I know exactly why. Then, yeah, because your brain won't shut off. Yeah. Because you're in you're in yeah. training mode. So you're like, oh, when I get yeah. up, I need to go and do this, this, this. and you're like. I, I, I have I it all the time, mate. I can't turn my brain off, so I'm like sat I'm there. Like, yeah. By any chance, yeah, can I, I go to sleep it, now? It, I'm fucking knackered. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one week ago, horrendous, and the more tired I was getting, the more grumpy and aggressive yeah, I was getting, yeah. and not in a good way, and sort of like, I could not sleep. And I remember, I, um, in the end, like one of the boys mentioned it, and I hadn't taken it before, and I had a, cut, and I had a drop, and I made that was the best night's sleep I had in a long time. Yeah, um, yeah. Obviously, with the UK, we have to have CBD from hemp, Rather than um, CBD from um, cannabinoid, uh, proper cannabinoid, um, like they do in the US, um, and it's it's a bit of a weaker strand, but you can still get like really good suppliers in the UK, and um, they do really good things. And I think obviously um, it's not really long until they do legalize um, the cannabis side of things. And as soon as they do that, like um, from a medical standards side of view, like you haven't got the THC, but if you can just yeah, use no idea. the cannabis people, to make stronger CBDs, yeah. so much better, man. So. Um, the, the- the like i'm massive in massively in, in, in yeah yeah uh, and the amount that people don't fucking realize how how good well even just hemp itself is you can fucking make paper yeah. out of hemp plastic plastic <laughs> oh, yeah, hemp. Anything. plastic replacements they reckon and even like like i always give like like i said the uh the infusion boys a, a fucking shout out like 
it helps with depression, anxiety, PTSD, sleeping disorders. It even helps with fucking eating disorders, mate. Yeah. And like I said, so, I use it. I, I use the muscle rub, which I'm actually sending some out awesome. to um to Little Brown um because he's fucking mm. I don't know what's wrong with him. His back, that's the one. His back yeah. from um, from cooking is is shot. My old man's going <laughs> to use it for his elbows. Um, yeah, he probably should massive, use it. Honestly. My old man should probably just like fill it everywhere. Up full of CBD and just lie in it. Just bath in it, like <laughs> soaking it. Yeah, but no. Nah, oh, mate, that's so, the other um, thing I've got. I've got I got CBD coffee. It's fucking lovely. Have you? Yeah. Is that good? Yeah, it's good, mate. Oh, it. D- decaf coffee though, which I was a bit upset about, but. <laughs> so um, like a little background. So when um, like I said, I um, I like to look in, into things as well. So when I looked into it, so the reason hemp um was such is such a restricted product. So back in the day, um, King Henry the Eighth, um, hemp. Okay. Uh, if you were a landowner, one eighth of your your land had to be put towards growing hemp in the UK. We were the biggest supplier of hemp in Europe, um, and that was because they seen so many uses of it. They could make cloth with it. They could um, make paper with it. Like there's so many different uses for it. So then, um, obviously, where the cotton trade was going, um, and the cotton trade with obviously was going on to a big thing. Um, they made it out that um, like hemp. Uh, and cannabis was such a big thing because they wanted to protect the trade they had. So um, they made, they they um, sort of alienized it and made it out to be such an evil thing and sort of changed it so it was illegal. So cannabis and hemp was illegal. So then now um, they're that strict on hemp in the UK. And um, what made me laugh um, when I was reading into it was um, Theresa May was one of the biggest ones to um, push in to legalize it. And when she came in, one of her sort of the things she mentioned was legalizing um, cannabis. And then all of a sudden um, she took a massive U-turn on it and decided and was like, no, they're not going to legalize it. And they're against it. And her husband is a massive investor into a massive medical cannabis producing facility in Manchester. That's the biggest one in Europe for producing cannabis. And he's like a 40% stakeholder in the company. So, um, it makes a lot of sense the fact that she was against legalizing it because they get paid for medical grade um, yeah, yeah, cool. for severe patients. Funny that, isn't it? Um, yeah. Like, it's what fucking mad. The, so, it's um, like, just, just oh, obviously the podcast is, tends to go around the, the mental health thing. Just the mental health aspect of CBD and, well, even, even fucking weed itself. Like, it chills you out. <laughs> you know what I mean? It calms you down and it helps you. A lot of people fucking think that if you smoke weed or, or do cannabis or, or what have you, you're one of those fucking losers that you remember from school. They didn't do anything. It makes you lazy. Fucking look at Joe Rogan. Does fucking everything. Hey, um, the amount of fighters I know, um, especially in Cali, who take edibles or smoke, a lot of times they're... Um, during fight camp, they'll stop smoking and they'll just go on to ed- edibles in leading up the camp because it aids recovery, aids their sleeping. Yeah, yeah. Um, they use it for pain, um, sort of, what's it called? Like medicating pain yeah, yeah. and all sorts. Um, for me, I'm massively against smoking, um, so I don't smoke any cannabis or anything. But um, yeah, the only smoking like I do is a, is a cigar on a, on a fucking, on a, on a victory yeah. or a happy time. Um, happy yeah, time. I do, I do, I do. Did you smoke a cigar after my fight then? Um... I might have done. Ah, oh, here we go now. That's not a big victory now, is it? <laughs> I, I, can't, I did smoke. Hold on. I, where's my phone? I took a photo of me smoking a cigar. I can't remember if it was after your fight or not. I hope so, but Jeremy, let's just go with it was. I'm just going to say it was, even if it wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, so what I, what I meant to say before I got distracted, because um, I go off on tandems, I'm oh, mate. You it, Tomo, Tomo's tangents is, is its own thing, mate. So, you <laughs> so uh, before the fight against Adam, um, we had to be down in the lobby to leave for, God, three, I think, yeah, three o'clock. And I wasn't yeah. fighting until obviously nine. Um, so we got in the lobby. Um, my coach, all my stuff for fighting was in one of my coach's bags. I'd have to carry a bag. Do you know why I carried downstairs? Your flag. My duvet. My duvet, <laughs> right? So I rolled yourself up in it. Yeah, sat in the corner and went to sleep. 
Um, the bus didn't come for 40 minutes. We had a 40 minute nap, nodded off. Nice. We got in, into the arena, um, literally went to see the doctor, had a quick look around the cage and everything, went back, rolled up in the duvet and slept for another two hours. <laughs> they woke up <laughs> off. By the time I got to sleep, so we got there, if, uh, we got there about a half, uh, God, what, four o'clock? By the time we seen the doctor, it was like half past. And then um, by the time I went to sleep and everything, it was about five o'clock. I slept until um, half six, seven o'clock. And then they woke me up and was like, look, it's time to start warming up. And um, what we said would be stiff. So um, the arena was freezing cold. I had like two layers on, like two jack, two jumpers on, pajama bottoms with joggers pulled over the top, like thick socks. I was wrapped in this duvet snoozing. And I woke up and started trying to walk. And then my coach was like, you look like an old man because I was so stiff waddling around the place until my joints started warming up. And then um, we warmed up. I felt good, and obviously went in there and um, Proctor needed a dog. Yeah, so there we go. There's the win, right? That just shows how calm and fucking ready you were. Like, hey, mate! I told you this before. The amount, the amount of people that were gone, you, you <laughs> took a two-hour nap before you went out and had a fight. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Lennox Lewis used to do that as well. Mate, I get too excited. Like, I'm sure. I'm sure fights. a lot. A lot of fighters. High level fighters can, can chill out and just go, oh, it's mm. fucking work, isn't it? Well, the, the thing is, is like you've got, you want to save as much adrenaline as you can for when you fight. Because mm. um, there's only a certain amount you can take. And like the same as any drug, when you start getting adrenaline pumped into your system, yeah. your body adapts to it. So if you're sat around hyper or bouncing around all day, not only are you burning calories you could use in that fight, but you're you burn it through your adrenaline you reserve. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. if you go to sleep in a corner and you relax and stay as loose as possible and just chill right out, by the time you start warming up and you're ready to go and you're staying calm, by the time you're in there, like that's why I'm so explosive and I'm ready to go. Like I saved everything up, I'm pent up and I'm ready to unleash you from up islands, do you know what I mean? But um, like I love, I just love the whole the whole day of fight day, do you know what I mean? It's just waiting around and it's all... You wait. I hate it as much. I love it because you try and stay calm and trying to wait around. Yeah, that's why I won't watch also, fights because you're also itching to get in, aren't you? Yeah, hundred so percent. I, I know exactly. I, I know. I know both ends of the scale on this. So I think I might have mentioned it before when I did when I boxed for the Air Force, and they yeah. stitched me. I think I might have told you before, and they stitched me up and put me in against a fucking. You did stitch you up. You did tell me. And, a uh, massive I, monster. Yeah, and when I walked out, I had the biggest adrenaline dump ever. My fucking legs were just jelly before I even got in there. I was like, oh, God. And I remember when I, when I, because I was winning the first two rounds and when he dropped me and I was like, it wasn't even a hard punch because I, I, my legs were just gone. So I like hit the ropes and went down and I was, and I could hear my corner going, Tomo, get up, get up, Tomo. I'm like, I actually can't. My legs have gone completely. I'm like, I'm not getting up. And then, when I did the uh, white collar boxing match, like it was a complete. Like, it's because I had been in there before. I was like, right, I know that I cannot get too excited. Like when stay nice and calm. Yeah, so I'd go out. I'd go and chat with um, the missus. I'd chat with Darren. I'd chat with my dad. Have conversations. Have a bit of water. Go back to the back. Do a little bit of pads. Come back out. Say hello. I was trying not to like bounce around too much. And then when and then when we were warming up and I was hitting the pads, I was like, "That guy's fucking nervous already." Because I was hitting these pads and you could see him like looking. I was like, "Yeah, you're fucking looking. You fucking know. I'm gonna hit you so hard, you fat fuck." As soon as you're right for eating a burger before we started fighting. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, fans of Granite Zero, that was me comparing my white collar boxing match to Mason Jones uh, winning the welterweight title. <laughs> hey mate, I've got a respect for any person who gets in that ring against anyone. Do you know what I mean like um, for all you know that guy could have been a bare knuckle boxing champion from Sweden? Do you know what I mean you don't know anything until you're in there with them? Like people talk a lot of shit, and there's a lot of people who take fights and don't tell people about them. So and that massive and that respect to the guy in there. Um, that's a big thing with the uh, work collar boxing. I watched a documentary. You never know who, it. man. It was fuck. I would. I was eye opening. Like watching that documentary, I was like fuck no, because. They don't ask you because it's an uh, exhibition fight. You don't even need to like put your boxing. Mate, fucking... I'm massively against white collar. <laughs> I, yeah. I hate it. I yeah. hate the white well, collar. I thought it was. Like... I thought it was brilliant when I when I did it. I can't lie. I thought it was fucking brilliant. The experience, the training, and then I was like looking back at it, and I was saying, 
There's like two actual coaches to about 47 people. Well, we spoke about this before because, like, I'm, um, I know you're obviously massive for the mental health side of things, and that's one of the reasons we get on so well. Because, like, I've told you more so about like um, people around me's personal um, sort of psychological ha- um, issues and sort of like their mental health. Um, with me, I've always been quite grounded. Um, even though I've had bouts where I've been quite low, I, I, I wouldn't count that as being oppressed after seeing the struggle a lot of people go through. When, like, and I, I'm just sort of, um, I'm massively supportive with it when it all comes to it, and like. Now, um, if you see, like, I'm an ambassador for a mental health charity in Tidy Butt. Tidy Butt. Um, mate, they're, it's a, a friend of mine. Um, he's running the charity. And, like, um, the first discussion we had was, like, look, um, I don't want this to be as offensive, but I need to ask. I was, like, how, we, like, are you taking a wage from it? Is all the money going to the charity? And I wanted to know where all the money was going to, go to I said, because I, I'm not going to put my name on that T-shirt uh, and wear that T-shirt if, um, it, unless I know exactly where it's going. And literally, he was sound. He went through everything. He said, look, this is, this is how we're doing it. Like, it is fully to help people. He said, I'm not making money off it. I just want people to sort of to know and to help as many people they can who's been in dark places and we've gone on so well. And um, he's actually my brother's, uh, well, my my brother, my coach's brother, and um, we go on so well. Um, so it's really nice for it. Like I'm, I'm honoured to be an ambassador for that. And um, the main reason I went on that tandem, because I, like I said, we're bands that is like a lot of white collars. They'll, um, they'll say, look, I'm, I'm doing it for charity, and I'll, I'll do a white collar fight for charity, and they'll give all these donations to um, the white collar place, and they'll give all this money in. And then white collar shows, they only have to give ten percent of all the money earned to whatever charity they're Mad, doing it for. It? So like. People don't they think of that. They pocket ninety percent. They, they pocket ninety like, percent, and it's like I think I raised 90%. like like almost three grand with the ticket sales that I I had like four tables. It's like I, I can't remember what it was like one hundred and fifty quid a table or something like that. I had four tables. Plus, well, you think of all that money they've taken. Like that show's probably taken. It could have taken 10, 15 grand, yeah. and then they give in one point five to a charity, and then they're like, "Oh, we'll just pocket the rest." You know? Yeah. It's, it's mad when you think about that. And I was really, sh- when I watched the documentary, I was like, I was like, ah, oh, it's going to be really good. It's about the work I did one of them. And I watched it and I was like, oh, sh- what? It's like, yeah, you're doing a little bit for cancer research. That's the reason why I did it. Because my nan yeah. got diagnosed with cancer. So I was like, well, what can Maybe I do? Talking to me I've, do- I've done a fucking run. I've done a fucking Spartan race. I don't want to do a marathon because <laughs> I hate running. So I didn't know you did a Spartan race. Yeah, I did. Um, I did the beast because I'm an idiot, right? I I actually I'm, quite I'm enjoyed it, but I'm an idiot. So I went to the missus. I can run five k, which is the small one. I was like, I can run ten k, I think, which is the the second one. I went, I might as well do the big one, the fucking twenty k. I'll do that. Like halfway round, I was like, I'm fucking hanging out. I got, <laughs> there's a bit where you have to do like a river crossing, and you. And I jumped in because I'm a pretty good swimmer. The fucking leg cramp, cramp mate. Sense. My fucking legs just went yeah. like, like cramp. And then to be fair, you you switch, you get to the end, and then they got um, the end of this swim. Towel station. Got, uh, you got the towels. You got the fucking uh, the bananas ready for you. So you fucking smash a couple of bananas down you, and then just fucking crack on. It was fucking brilliant. But I I kind of wish that I did it. Yourself while running around. <laughs> I, 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 I wish I did it as a team though. Like. Mm-hmm. I did it on my own. Well, you run faster then. You got people to push you on and stuff. Yeah, yeah. And I did it on my own. There was, the amount you, of times you... I was like, "Fucking, oh, I'm fucking hanging." <laughs> Mate, whenever I want to push a pace, I'll run with boys I know can run because, like, we both look at each other and you're both like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, I'll stay on his shoulder," and he's like, "Oh, I'm gonna blow him away." So you start going and going and yeah, going, yeah, also yeah. you get faster and faster. And you're like, "Oh, here we go." <laughs> Breathe through my ass. The the funniest thing, so like talking about being an idiot. Um, I know he listens to the show. So my mate Chris Dunn who's been on the show a couple of times. He, yeah. hey, Chris, yeah, an idiot. Um, <laughs> he signed up for the London Marathon, right? And I think yeah. the, the, the longest run he did during his training was probably eight miles, something like that. And I was like, Chris, this was like two weeks out from the, from the event. He went, oh, I've done eight miles, I'll be all right. So like, Chris, it's twenty six point whatever miles. He's like, yeah, I'll be fine. He's like, what? 
I mean, at this point, you should be tapering down your, your miles so that you're fresh for the... And he's like, nah, I'll just cuff it. I'll be all right. <laughs> how did he get on? Oh, he, he, he completed it. I think he did it. In, I can't even remember how long he did it. But he completed it, and I was like, fucking fair play to you, because he literally did Good no point, training. <laughs> <laughs> One of them. Yeah. Bastard. He's like, well, I've, nah, I've, fucking, up, I've run further than that before. It's like, no, you haven't. <laughs> No. Mate, honestly, I've looked to do a marathon before and I generally thought, I thought, why would I do that myself? Yeah. Why is the point? Horrible. What is he asked I, me? I think that he's like, Tom, do you want to do a marathon? Absolutely not, mate. Not doing it. Why not? Hate running. Honestly, my, my brother was doing one. He was like, I'm doing half marathon. I was like, no, definitely not. I'm not doing that. Like, I'll do a five or 10K because I run that in, in, in any way. Yeah, like, yeah, I'll yeah. run eight case comfortably. So um, I'll do one of those, but like, I, I'm too competitive. Like, if I did that, I wouldn't be able to train properly for a week because I'd literally be trying to lap everyone. Yeah. you just Because you're competitive, so you're like, oh, I'm going to try and beat just, you. I'll have to beat... Well, it's like, I'll take a person in front of me, then I'll take a person in front of that, and I'll take a person in front of that, and I'm like, all of a sudden, then I'm sprinting, and I'm like, breathing through my ass. Like, it's the hardest 5 or 10K you've ever done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking Mo Farah. The Welsh Mo Farah. Mate, honestly, so um, when I was running, um, doing my runs before... Um, uh, I was through my 5Ks and all of a sudden I was trying to get quicker and quicker. And people were like, oh, that's not a bad time. I was like, yeah, I'll get quicker. And then one of the boys said to me, oh, I, I know one of the Welsh racers who used to do um, 5K in, God, what was it, 18 minutes. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to beat that. So I did it in like, uh, what I do it in, I did it in like, on a treadmill mine. So I cheated. But I did it in like <laughs> 17 something, 17.40, right? And I remember I run it and I started, and the first 30 seconds, I was like, I am going to die. I was like, I am struggling here. And I remember it got to five minutes, and I was like, all right, I'm just going to have to stop it. And I kept going, kept going. Then I hit 10, and I was like, look, I'm nearly there now. And then I hit 15, and I was like, really badly struggling, sweat steaming off me. Like, there was a guy, it was in a public gym as well, and everyone was looking at me as if like, because obviously you can imagine how fast the treadmill spin. Oh, uh, yeah. And looking at me like, like this, this guy's gonna die here. And I hit the 17 mark, and as soon as, or wherever it was, as soon as I hit the 5k, I hit stop and literally like jumped, jumped to the sides. and was literally like trying not to be sick and an LMS. I thought, yeah, smash that. Went home, had some food, passed out, woke up, couldn't move my legs. And then he was like, <laughs> oh, you got training now. And I lift the next day. And my coach was like, why are you doing this? He was like, you are not a runner. He was like, you are a fighter who was doing it for a little bit of endurance. So now, I do 8Ks in about 50, 48, 50 minutes. Like, nice yeah, slow yeah. pace. I have a little sing song on the nice way around. steady round. pace. Yeah. Just gradually slow. Mm. Yeah, it's fucking mad at it when that you're doing well that. That works well for me. It is mad. Oh, stupid, honestly. He had one word to me. He sat me down. He was like, look, you need to stop. He was like, "That's just you're just taking the piss. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm sure, I'll have to look back because I'm sure I've got somewhere. I did like 17, something it was, 5K. So um, I was flying, absolutely flying on it. <laughs> fucking brilliant. <laughs> Fucking brilliant. <laughs> just a dick. I'm just a giant dickhead, honestly. Oh, very similar. Mate, like mate, one, of the reasons, oh, no. one of the reasons I give up drinking was because of that, that, that fucking, sorry, language. I should stop swearing. I'm trying not to. No. Um, that, that fact was because, like, I'm the type of person who would have, have I would, I drink, and I wouldn't have drunk in ages anyway, because I always was quite, I always hated it, because I was always, like, training or I had something on, so I never really was a big drinker, and I always stayed away from it. So then I'd, I'd drink, and I'd be like, me, I'd be going around to one of the boys and they'd be like, oh, look, you can't do it. And so I'd drink just to prove I could and I'd be drinking their pace. And then the drunk I'd get, the more I thought I was a massive drinker and the more confident I'd get on how much drink I got old. So the faster and all I'd be drinking these drinks. I'd be like neck and double vodkas and all. And I'd just get myself into a right old pickle and then I'd be rough for like a week and be like, oh, I'm never drinking again. So um, stopping was one of the best things I did. And like, um, I'm, sure I, I'm sure it'll be like three years December. Three years to Sam, I would have stopped. To be fair, that's a, that's, that's good going, mate. Darren Darren gave me the nickname from um, the movie Old School of um, Frank the Tank when I go Frank drinking. the Tank. Yeah. Frank the I, Tank. When, when I'm at home, I tend to not, like, apart from now, I'm having a couple of beers, but I don't tend to drink too much. Yeah. I'm, I'm a family guy. I can't be going out getting pissed all the time. But yeah, Dar <laughs> Darren, Darren gives me the fucking Frank the Tank. So he's like, "Oh, is Frank coming out tonight?" It's like, "Yeah, most likely." It's one of the. It's, it just it reminds me because I'm, I I was loved up with the missus for for ages, and it's like, yeah, 
which coming up it would be twelve years now, been together. Oh, congratulations, mate! Yeah, we're engaged. Ma- uh, married? We're married, married for nine years. We've been together for twelve. So, oh, yeah. 10 year anniversary soon. Yeah, Didn't next year, next next September, 10 year anniversary, mate. But um, mate, hopefully, it'll all change and you can do something to celebrate properly rather than um, stuck in a COVID bubble. Yeah, true. Well, we, I took him for a nice steak. Um, to be fair, it was nice. It was act- no, we nice. we palmed the, palmed the kids off to the to the in laws and then went for a fucking steak. It was nice, mate. She had, we had cocktails. I was no, drinking nice. whiskey. It was fucking spot on. But yeah, the, the scene. Goodbye. Always fucking reminds me of like me, like when I first got with with the missus. It was like the bit at the house party where he goes, "No, I told my missus I wouldn't drink tonight." And he's like, "Come on, you can have one." He's like, "Yeah, I can have one." And then he drinks and he goes, "Hit it up again, let's go." <laughs> Frank, oh, don't. Right, check my battery, that, asshole. That's all in. good, mate. That, that's exactly. Don't to die on you, asshole. That's that's exactly how I was, like. Especially when I was on on camp, when I when I was in the uh, in the military, it was like, Tom, are you coming out? It's like, nah. Oh, come on, you can come out for one. Yeah, all right then. So I'd go out for one, and then it's like twenty points later. Yeah, it, it, on a Wednesday, singing karaoke in the world's worst bar, <laughs> drinking oh, fucking Jager bombs. I'm still a, I'm still a good laugh when I go out. Like when I do go out and enjoy myself. Like um, I went like Ibiza basically sober a couple uh, couple of years ago when. Um, like I was, I was, I was the only person who went out every night. Um, all the boys, they were on the drugs and drink, and um, they crashed out a few, a few nights, and they struggled. And one of the boys stayed in with his girlfriend for two nights. We met out there, and um, like he met her. Like obviously they were together back home, and then he, she was on all the time. Oh, I got time. yeah, yeah it. Coincidentally. Oh, oh, oh! What are you doing out here? Together, on a, what are you doing out here on a boys' night? I don't know. So. Um, you know what I mean? So, uh, like, the last night, he was like, oh, we're going to stay and have a nice meal. I said, what do you mean, have a nice meal? Were you on, on the beach at 3 o'clock in the morning? I said, of course not. I said, I was in a club having fun. I said, you're boring. <laughs> so, um, I went... Oh, that disco uh, dancing, throwing some shade. Mate, I went out on, on my last night on, on my own. I was just like, I'm just going to go out and have fun. So, uh, I went out and went... Uh, um, I think we just went to... Oosh, I, I went to Oosh, I think, on, on my own. It was just in the front, like... Um, Nothing like for a techno, like a techno night, nothing like just funny. I was in the official photo and everything. Um, but yeah, I just had a way of the time, I mean, like that, that was me. So, um, I don't get a chance to go out much, but it's nice to enjoy myself. But uh, I'm massively, um, into sort of, um, going out sober, and um, I really encourage it with people. And, um, I remember like how weird people see it because, like, I stopped the ones. Um, I went out sober, um, I met one of the girls I've been messaging, and, um, like, we chilled out for a bit, and then we ended up going back to mine. So um, I was like, look, I'm not drinking. I'll drive us back. And um, I go, uh, please watch me leave um, a club in Newport. Watch me go to my car. Followed me out the dual carriageway and pulled me over the dual carriageway. And I remember this cop, I come swaggering down to the door. I was like, drop your window. I dropped my window. I was like, oh, yeah, can I help you? And then he said, you, I just see you come out of a club. I was like, yeah. He was like, well, he said, we'll have to breathalyze you. I said, yeah, no problem, mate. And he looked at me. He was like, what do you mean? I was like, well, he was like, <laughs> You can breath like me, it's no problem. I said, I've been drinking. He said, he said, oh, are you doing lifts to you? I said, no. I said, I've been out. And he went, what do you mean you've been out and not drinking? I said, well, I said, I, I don't know. a foreign drink. concept said, to people. Yeah, I mean, he was disgusted with me. Generally, if I had <laughs> breath, like, breathed, like, 70 over, over, I mean, I mean, like, look, mate, I just wanted to pick up some bird and go home. You'd be, um, you'd be like, oh, go on your way. This guy was disgusted with me. I literally checked my tires there and I didn't go with me. And then, like, sent me on, on my way because there's nothing wrong with my car. He was like, he was just Fuck. like he was like this fucking so weird and- this fucking Jack Lalad has come out and he's not even fucking drinking. <laughs> what the fuck's occurring here? I know. <laughs> it's just like like my friends all drink, my brothers all drink, and like I'm a massive for people having a good time. Um, but I was speaking to my youngest brother about this actually, because like we went out for just like a family thing and he's slamming drinks into him as fast as he can, and it's like He's not drinking to enjoy it. And like, he was like, oh, I love a vodka and um, lemonade and, and grinding because you can, you can hardly taste the vodka. And I'm like, well, what's the point? I was like, I just don't get it. I was like, you're drinking to get as drunk as possible and just trying to like prove who's the biggest by how much you can drink. I was like, if you want to go out and have a casual drink, I understand it's like, because all my friends drink, they all love the party scene and stuff. And I understand that. But I don't understand this. You sat in, like, 
we'll go out on a family night and they'll be slamming drinks into him as fast as possible. And then like, yeah, he's like, oh, my dad, I can drink more than you, I can drink faster than you. My dad's looking at him just laughing, like, you'll learn, like. And it's like, it's such a drink, you'll it's such it. a, social, sort of a social thing now where it's like a social mandatory thing. Yeah. Like I had, um, I had people literally ask me if I was taking drugs because I was out and, and they didn't, they saw me drinking waters all night. And it was like, oh, you, you're just a massive druggie. And I'm like, I'm like, look, I was like, I get drug tested. I was like, honestly, I don't touch it. Like, <laughs> like, I've never taken chemicals like that. And they're like, um, they're like, oh, yeah, there's no way you could be out sober and um, um, dancing the way you do without taking stuff. And I'm like, look, I was like, I just don't care. It's crazy that people think that you can't drink. Or, yeah, you can't drink and not have fun. Yeah. Well, of course, you, you of can't have a good time without drinking. Yeah, yeah. Of course you can. Of course you can. Uh, the boys used to love it anyway because, like, the amount of times I've like, um, I've ended up like dragging the boys out of trouble, or I've stopped a few of the boys getting yeah, blasted, yeah. or ended up um, give it like <laughs> getting stuck into people uh, on a night out. Um, it's Even just better being... though, because if you're sober and you're watching drunk people have a fight, it is funny. Honestly, <laughs> it's like um, like a couple of times, like um, I remember. It was um, a boy starting on, on my cousin and a few of the boys. And, like, like my friends are, are dicks. They are a massive idiot. Same as anyone's friends. But, um, like, to be fair, they weren't really doing anything wrong. This guy came across, he was drunk, and you could tell. You don't even tell someone's looking for it. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was me when I was do. about 18, 19, 20, <laughs> 21, 30, <laughs> 33. Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> but, mate, we... We clocked him straight away, and I clocked him, and I was like, "Oh, here we go!" Because you can tell looking at people, they, he's looking for it, and like, see him yeah, walking yeah. like through Newport, like trying to bang into people and just, like shouting shit at them and all. And I remember, as um, soon as I seen him come in, I just circled around just to make sure I keep an eye on him. And then um, he like walked straight to my cousin, like smashed him in the shoulder, and was like, "Watch where you go in." And they started having this sort of back and forth. And I remember, like, like two of the boys next to him gave him a shove. And was like, "Look, there's like there's a good couple of us, like sort of like fuck off, like." And then he grabbed this bottle and put it behind his back. And he tell you he was going to glass him. As soon as he moved, I gripped the bottle. And literally, just as he went to whip it round to hit him, I pulled it out of his hand. And he sort of, like, almost slapped my cousin. My cousin <laughs> grabbed him. And then about to just sort of, like, seen it, laugh, dragged the guy out and said, like, look, have a good night. But he's like, if I hadn't been there, that's one free shot he probably would have glassed my cousin with. Like, and it's yeah, just like, exactly. He's like, having someone, like... And, Making sure the boys get home safe. Um, like the amount of times I had to carry boys at the boys at the clubs, or like um, we've seen some girls who've been in an mess and like sort of people we knew and sort of respected, or like one of the boys' girlfriends who made sure has got home safe. And you never know what would happen. Do you mean like yeah, one of the local yeah. boys he grew up with? I remember seeing his girlfriend like just literally passed out in in, in a doorway in um, in the middle of Newport. So um, like we give him a ring and was like, look, we just found your girlfriend passed out. He's like, look, just give her a lift home for me. So we like carried her, chucked her in a car, give her a lift home and um, send her home safe. And it's like, you never know what's going to happen. Do you mean? Cause it's still nah. city. Yeah. Mate, when, when I was back in my life, 18, like I said, 18, 19, 20, um, up until pretty much I left the military when I, when I got my eldest, I was a, I was a fucking nightmare, mate. I think I mentioned that before. I, I, I loved, like, if I was pissed, like proper pissed, I'd be like, well, I'm pissed, I'm happy, I've had a good fucking night out, I might as well have a fight and it'll top it off. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I love a fight, man. I used to love mate, a I, fight. I, it's, it's, it's the same old, it's the old saying it from like Fight Club. You don't know what you're truly about until someone's punched you in the face. It's like, I, I, I remember the first first proper fight I had was outside a shit nightclub in, um, in Hereford and, and Darren and his mate were there and he thought it was the funniest thing he's ever seen. So this this bloke, the only way I can describe it was he 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 shot on me, and me being a a, a former sort of rugby player at school, I managed to like as he came in, so I sort yeah. of palmed him off and sprawled at the same time, and I managed to like <laughs> I can remember it now, but now I know exactly what position I was in because I've done a little bit of little bit of stuff. I was basically palmed him like palmed him off rolled him and managed to get in full mount and just fucking laid into him but it my brother calls it drops the rapid, and bombs like the the, the the rapid punch he calls it i must have hit him about 10 times in the space of like a second it was like that mm. like that and <laughs> darren pulls me off and pulls me out but 
fucking Darren is just as bad as me, if not worse. Or he was. We, uh, Darren's told me this, actually. Before. Yeah, we, we used to call him the sniper, mate. <laughs> like, I remember once uh, in, I stole someone's hat on, like, fucking New yeah, Year's. Yeah, just think. as a laugh, like. And then he started on me. And I was about to clock him. And then fucking Darren, Darren came out came from behind. And just fucking <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wee! <laughs> Uh, no, um, for anyone watching this, um, obviously I've I've got to go in fifteen minutes. I need to get some food, but um, that's all good, mate. Before I, uh, before we get close, um, so for anyone watching this, um, if you have kids or um, if just for yourself, do a little bit of self defence. Learn to throw a punch and um, do a little bit of jujitsu. Look after yourself. Do you know what I mean? And especially if you've got girls, always teach them how to throw a punch um, because like it'll save you sometimes. And like um, I'm I'm always been a sort of young looking geezer. The old like. Only I'm 25 now. Uh, when I was 18, I still looked about 14 to the point where I had people challenging my own ID for years because they reckon I, I, I look too young, I look fake, and all sorts. But um, uh, not long ago, probably like uh, a year, a year ago, maybe closer to a year and a half now, um, I'm sure I told you this where I popped the game, my girlfriend, a cup of coffee while she was teaching her kickboxing club. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was driving the car. Um, at the time, my window was broke, so um, my window wouldn't go up and down. And um, as I was driving to the coffee place, um, it, it's, it passes like uh, spoons. And some guys misses them come out and you could, like if, if, if I noticed him a bit more, you could tell he was a dickhead. But the guy like steps in front of my car, so I swerves and smashed the horn. And I'm like, like as if to say like, what the fuck are you doing? And um, he comes running after my car. So I stopped the car, my window works, I opened the car door and just shouted like, like what the fuck are you doing? And he just punched me straight to the car door. And um, like, Thinking about it back, he didn't hit me because um, he thought, oh, I'll have this guy now. He hit me because, one, I look young. Two, I look really skinny because I was in this, sat in this car and I always looked tiny in this car. I had like a, I had, because I've been watching, man, I had black shorts on, slides, um, and just a sweatshirt, a grey sweatshirt that was really bad baggy on me and made me look even skinnier. And I remember he just hit me through this car door and I literally like, the way he, he, he set it up as well was he was going to punch me, he was going to spur in the end me, and he was going to hit me a few times in, in the car, probably give me a paste in. And from the way he did it, I could tell straight away he'd done it before. Like, he'd give people paste ins before. So um, he's definitely a bully guy. So as soon as he hit me, I popped the seatbelt, um, did the shoulder, so I took a punch in my shoulder, hit a low single, took him down, hit him with two short shots. His missus come across. And it, this is her words, I shit you not. Oh, my God, why do you have to do it every time? And he, she, I thought she was going to kick me. So I tensed and dropped my head thinking, if she kicks me, I'll stand up, I'll put a knee into this boy and then I'll probably have to deal with her if she starts throwing bombs. And um, she was just so gentle saying, I'm so sorry he does this all the time. And that really pissed me off because I thought, my younger brother just passed his car test. Um, he's done a little bit, but he's not a type of guy. And like, how many people has he done this to before? And afterwards, yeah, yeah. when I found out who it was, he was a bully boy. So it's got to give him a little slapping around. But um, like these people don't learn. So, if you can, learn to protect yourself, do you know what I mean? Like, because you never know who's going to turn around and study from the exactly. side or and just give you spatial awareness and sort of, like, especially with girls these days, like, you never know who's going to sort of grip them up and drag them around and yeah, yeah. you never know the situation to well, get into. So just learn to sort of exactly, deal mate. with it. And as, as a, a father of two, I'm, I'm forever dropping little tips to the, to the girls. Like, like my, do my eldest started when we were like messing about she tries to throw a punch, but she started off by tucking her thumbs into her... Breaking her hands. Yeah, let me tell I was you like, nah, don't fucking do that. Keep your thumb out. And it's like thumb little out. tips, like twit, like do thumb a little twist. Thumb in, squeeze yeah, yeah. through. And when you smash, try and connect with two yeah, people. With the, with the, with the yeah, with the front two. Yeah, because people two. swing and they always swing and they come around like this and they always catch you. Yeah. And that breaks the hand down to you. So they try and connect with these two. Yeah. Boom. Better off two, catching two, on the top of your hand. Those two. But like I like I've said on a couple of times, I had um Eddie Eddie Cohn on the on the show. You might have heard of Eddie. Uh, he, he's a fucking legit fucking Wizard. BJJ black belt. <laughs> no, legit um, like yeah. uh, BJJ black belt, uh, part That's of the sick. Metropolitan Police. He, he, he's fucking oh, sick. Very cool. Yeah, he's uh, he's fucking he's apparently in the jujitsu side of the world, he's quite quite known. Well, no. Anyway, yeah. I was telling him about um, my eldest's rear naked choke that she can do, and fuck me, can she put that in? Mm. She, she's annoying though, because she'll go, oh, "I'm just gonna get on your back." It's like, "Well, you can't do that." Yeah, that's, like, 
That's I used cheating. To use the kid all the time. Mate. Skinny little arms, mate. Skinny little arms. They mate. Into that shit. Genuinely, I, I remind me. I will send you this clip. So on my birthday, my uh, father-in-law came around. Mate, my father-in-law came around and he was picking on her a little bit, tickling her and, and winding her up. Winding she, her I'll up. get, I'll get oh, you, Granddad. I'll get you. And she was messing about on his back. She fucking, he was like that. Don't get. And she did something, and I don't even know how she did it, but he managed to like put his hands down to try and stop something, and it was fucking quick, sharp, mate. And he was like that in the fucking back of the chair, fucking tapping out. And I was like, that's my girl. Sink it in. Sink it in. <laughs> <laughs> Put your hooks in. Put your hooks in. <laughs> oh, mate. Honestly, that's it. Hooks in. Hips forward. Elevate through. I think I, um, I took the rugby player out in um, Newport McDonald's at once because um, he literally kept trying to start on us. I said, look, mate, I'm not, I just want to go home. And then he got a bit handsy, tried to throw me around. I slipped to his back, Matt returned him, got on his back, sunk to Uxin and choked him to sleep. <laughs> he was like 6'5", yes. uh, a prop. And next thing he knows, I'm on his back and he's tapping out the floor and all the boys are going, don't. <laughs> he's going, what do you mean tap? It's in the WWE. Fucking kill him. <laughs> I choked him out all over the floor we went out. <laughs> honestly, time. like. You can't tap out. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, mate, honestly, we had a way of time. Um, again, I've never ever got into a fight uh the other person i either didn't initiate um where i've had to defend myself or we've gone to sit um circumstance i'm always big on talking people down and whether that the best way to talk people down another way for giving advice oh yeah it's not to try and be polite the best way to talk people down is to turn around get nasty and tell people that you are going to absolutely murder them and their kids if they don't back up and a lot of times people are shit out yeah, and that's yeah. the best way. Being being polite to people, people just see it as a weakness. It works. So it works ne never show ways. your belly. Always show your always show the teeth. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of different ways to do it. Um, obviously, being uh, close protection trained, you're taught to oh, 100%. try and de-escalate things. But I always forget you've done all this mad stuff. Yeah, mate. I'm I'm fucking fucking queued up. A lot of people don't realise the 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 <laughs> qualifications I got in that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, it, you, you, you're taught to de-escalate, but sometimes that just fucking don't work. So needs must, like, like you said. Aggression and yeah. Um, oh, so I, you do I almost did now, it. Huh? Are you doing jujitsu now? A little bit. Um, I, the bloke that I do it with is fucking with my work and that. You know what? That's the annoying oh. thing because I do twelve-hour shifts. I don't finish until like six, yeah. and it's like. The closest, the closest actual place to do it is yeah. like another fucking hour away drive. It's like ah, it's even a time. Um, but the bloke that I do my military boot camps with, he does them. It, well, he, do, he, do, he doesn't does them. He he is a he's a purple belt, I believe, and he's a, he's a pretty good instructor, to be fair. But yeah, he's the guy that humbled me like proper. Like I was like, I've got at least thirty kilos on this guy, at least. I went, I could just use my weight. Did it work? Did it fuck? He fucking yeah. choked me out. Something. Uh, who... But yeah, yeah. I, I I need to do a bit more, I think. But you know. Yeah, I mean, 100%. Like, um, I'd recommend, like, if you ever do anything in your life, um, especially if you've done a bit of close protection, just get a blue belt. Um, that's literally, it's about a year or two um, worth of constant work. So it's that 100, 104 weeks worth of training, um, whether whether you spread that whenever. 104 weeks, which is one session, maybe two sessions a week for 104 weeks. No matter how you do it, even if you do it in five years, um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. well worth doing because just knowing how to restrain people, how to deal with people. Like I'm not going to say if someone pulls a knife on you, you're going to be able to restrain them, pull guard, yeah, yeah, and of course, yeah. you'll be choking someone out. But like, if anyone does ever come up and they do start thing, just knowing you've got the confidence that, like, if something happens, you sort of you know how to deal with it. And especially for again for women, like, if you can do anything, especially with girls, just get them into jiu-jitsu so that like worst come the worst, if, if the worst did happen, like they know where to kick, where to push, and how to get up yeah. and get away. And um, like, the one thing that really irritates me lately is um, uh. Girls in clubs where um, they've had a few bits to drink and um, they sort of get on a high horse and it's like everyone has an opinion and stuff. But when they start getting aggressive with people, oh, they start a bit of banding and escalates. Like the amount of girls I see who, and I generally think, because they haven't been taught how to punch, they don't know how to handle their aggression and they obviously have had a few to drink. 
The amount of girls I've seen glassing people, like my brother got glassed about two years ago, and she, they hit him, and he was literally, it went literally to there, the glass. If he'd been a couple of centimeters more, you, my brother would be blind in one eye. Yeah. And like, um, the, I, I'm not stupid enough because I know how my level of aggression is, and um, I know what it's like after I have a drink, but to say like, look, violence is never the answer because you have a couple of drinks, you know what it's like, people are going to throw bombs, and anyone who thinks that otherwise i've never been out never can consume a drink or has never been an idiot because you know girls especially after they have a few drinks um if someone ends up winding them up they they get violent it's, it's yeah, the way of the world but I've if got, a girl uh, knows how to punch the worst thing that happens she can throw a slap or she can throw a punch and then some when girls like lately the amount of people i've seen glassing people out and then um, like uh, they, they, i've got no time for that because at the end of the day you punch someone as long as you know what you're doing and the little accident, like a good case scenario, um, which is going to be most of the time, you're going to end up with a black eye at worst, maybe a bit of blood, nothing yeah. massive, do you know what I mean? But um, when exactly. you start glassing people, like, you start glassing just, people, you're ruining someone's life. Bricks and shit like that. Mate, I've glass is terrible, honestly. Yeah, I've, I've had a bloke say that he's going to hit me with a brick and I just laughed in his face. Um... <laughs> Um, cause I, cause I was confident at the time. I was like, you even pick up that brick, mate. I'm going to fuck you right up. But, um, <laughs> uh, I remember, I remember once been on a night out on, on holiday in Malta. And, um, I was, I was sat having, a, having a beer with, with a, with a buddy of mine, Spud. And, uh, we were watching this chick. She came out, she'd have an argument with her fucking fella. <laughs> It's, it's not really something to laugh about, but I thought it was funny at the time, but it probably funny wasn't actually. So she's come out, she's gobbing off to him. He said something back to her that she obviously didn't like. So she took her fucking stiletto off and oh, smacked no. him with a shoe and it split his fucking head open. Like, right open. Yeah. And he just turned around and fucking laid her out. Nailed it. Like yeah. one, one Man, punch I, bomb. And I would, I, again, it was one of those like, blind, like, I mean, I'm in shock here that he hit her that hard. But also, that is funny because she's hitting with a shoe yeah. and he's gone, fuck this noise. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. yeah. Like, um, a friend of mine, um, I wouldn't say who, um, I remember he was always told a story because I've got to go in five minutes anyway. But yeah, um, so he I'm always in... told a story, and um, he literally said he was out the night I was in Cardiff and he was going to meet his friends and he hadn't even been drinking. And he's walking on Chippy, Na Chippy Lane, which is um, like well known for um, Id idiots trying to start fights. And he said he's seen some girl and her boyfriend in front, and it was the girl it was, and like she was going around, like she was like punching people's food out of their hands, and like she chinned someone coming past. And like your boyfriend was stood behind her, like laughing, seeing it all funny. And um, they walked up to the, the guy I know, and um, he, as soon as he seen her come towards him, she lifted her hand, and he literally just hit her with a massive bomb. Boom! Literally clocked her out. And then literally, as soon as before she'd even hit the floor, he stepped towards her boyfriend, just clocked her boyfriend out, and then turned around and literally just pegged it, ran all the way home. <laughs> and he literally said, he's like, come. "He's like, he was like at that time, he was like, I had, I had no options." He said. Like, by the time I clocked her, she was already too close to me for me to move cleaning out the way. As um, soon as I knew she was going to get, she was going to go, he said, and I clocked what was happening. He said, she was already moving to hit me, so I hit her. And then he said, before her boyfriend even do anything, he's like, all I could think in my head was, if that was me, I would literally be swinging. So he said he just clocked in before she even yeah, had time yeah, to react. Yeah, before we even fucking Dropped the two of them, and then was gone. He said, I, I wouldn't stick it around. Yeah, we've all been so there. I was, Funny. Right, before I go, any questions before I go? I got three minutes. Anything you want to ask? Uh, Anything, you've um, got three minutes. Three, three minutes, three, three minutes. Three questions. We've already we go. done ideal opponent, haven't we? Because obviously you want to fight fucking Khabib. I want a UFC and I want a well-ranked UFC. Not so well, not so much rank, but I want someone with a good, uh, a good record that look good when I smash them to pieces. Right. First meal that you would eat after you win your fucking debut in the UFC. If I knew, I could definitely um, have time off as well. Um, beefy boys, man. Like, I love a good barbecue. I love a good burger on there. Oy, oy. Yeah, so, um, definitely be a bit beefy boys. Like, I generally do like their food. So, um, and they, when I get down there, they treat me so well. Do you know what I mean? It's so, um, yeah, beefy boys, definitely. Like, um, obviously, I love a good steak and stuff. But, you see, I, I like cooking myself. And um, 
like the sauce, the the different burgers they have, the loaded fries, the sides. Yeah, definitely Beefy Boys. Beefy Boys wins it. Go to yeah, that. Shout out to the Beefy Boys. Shout out. Uh, so one more question, one more question. You put me on a fucking spot here. Sorry, Dad. Uh, I don't usually do questions. I can, I, I should have got my phone ready, shouldn't I, and gone fan questions for the for the dragon. Uh, oh, I have, mate. We'll do that one. Day. We'll do a random where, where did the video. dragon come from? Don't just say because you're right. Wife. So um, that was literally so we were thinking about ring names and they were throwing stuff around my coaches and stuff and I was like, no, we're going with the dragon and they was like, why? And um, I've always liked the thing of the mentality side of things, which is um, the dragon man chat mentality from them. Um, Japanese, I sure it's a short novel or it's a story and it's basically, it's all about um, no matter how much sort of fire you have in your bed, you always keep the head calm and that's the way I've always been, like um, I've always been very temperamental, I've always been um, sort of very aggressive and MMA's chilled me out so much and I've got such control that people generally, like when I, like people generally, when I have conversations with them, I see them out and they don't know me that well. They're like, oh, look, like you're a really chilled out person. And um, like people always laugh because I'm like, I'm leaving the island. Um, it's just because everything's controlled and I've always been grown up and sort of well mannered and sort of everything sculptured towards fire. And that um, I, I know there's always a time for certain things. It's always, I'm really, I'm, I need to surface. And um, I'm really respectful and I'm sort of, it's the Chan in the, the Chan of the Dragon. So it's fire in the belly and it's always under control and keep your mind nice and calm. And then um, with the, the Welsh Dragon side of things, um, like for anyone who's never, I don't know why no one would have seen it, but we've got the, the Wales got the best flag in the world. There's a giant yeah, dragon yeah. on it. Hands down. And um, like I've always been sort of, um, I've always loved the flag and I, since I was a kid and I've always loved being Welsh. And um, uh, I'm going to be the first Welsh Dragon in um in UFC, obviously, there's, there's been Welsh fighters, but there haven't been any dragons in um, out of Wales yet. So I'll be here, yeah, boy. Fucking brilliant, mate. Fucking and not long. Brilliant. Keep keep an eye on this space. It's not really long. No, oh, hopefully, in, uh, hopefully in, in a matter of weeks. And just just to fucking reiterate your um your point there, mate. Like when I first spoke to you. We'd never fucking met. We'd never done anything like that before. <laughs> and we we literally went like a three-hour podcast, I think our first one was. Yeah, man. Like that. And then obviously That's Darren then came man. on. Or was it Darren was on on the first one, then the second one, it was Darren just me was on and the you. First one, and, me and, you and, then, the and then the third one, Darren was back on, and now you're on for the fourth time. And each, each time, like, you wouldn't think that you were an elite fucking athlete, a double champion in Cage Warriors, how down to earth you are. Soon and... to be legend. Yeah, Woo! soon to be legend, mate. <laughs> Woo! Fucking yes. Uh, but I can, I can honestly hold you next to, well, obviously Jack Shaw as well, because he's been on the show. The, the monster, the monster. The fact, right. So I've had um, yourselves, Liz Carmouche on, very fucking down to earth mm. people. But all three of you, I've had one, I think I've told you about, who's a fucking dickhead. Yeah. And if you're listening still, you're a dickhead. Um, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It, it seems to be, you know, if you're down to earth, you're a fucking good guy, you're a fucking actual champion, unlike people that think they're fucking better than they are. <laughs> but agree, man. we'll end it's it on that one because Mason the Dragon Jones needs to get some fucking food. And to be fair, I'm busting for a piss. So, Mason, <laughs> fucking always a pleasure. Amazing episode again, mate. Thanks for coming back on. Thank you very much for having me on. Um, ah, like I said, just um, anytime you you will call me on, you know I always make time for you, man. Always. You will, you will. And I need to get your uh, good lady on soon because we were supposed to reschedule and we haven't. So I'll ping her a message and get her back on. Stay on top of it because I know your, your anxiety does flare up when she talks about stuff like this. So it'd be good for her to get on. I know she wants to. She just yeah, sort of yeah, like yeah. She well, when we were supposed <laughs> to have it, she had she had loads of things that seemed to just come yeah. all at once. So. Just let yeah. her know when you, when you speak to her, obviously. It's fine. Like, She's upstairs, she is. It is fine. If she, if she ever re needs to reschedule and things like that, it doesn't fucking bother me. I'm not like fucking Joe That's Rogan. Fine. You know what I mean? I'll always make time. So, Thank you so much. Mate, cheers for coming on. And I will message Pleasure. you soon. And 100%. I should be down in October. So we'll meet up. 100%. Let tomorrow. me know. <laughs> speak to you soon, mate. Right. Cheers, mate.